Uh, so today we're actually gonna add some wires into our integrated fuse box in the Haltech Premium Loom. Uh, what we're gonna do is add in two extra relays that are going to work for our thermofan controls. Um, so we're actually supplied the extra fuse and relay pins and we're going to add in our two thermofan relays here. Um, so I'm just going to go through how we're going to incorporate these and how they're all going to work in the system together. So in our little fuse box here, um, these are where the fuses live across here. And then we've got our fuel pump relay. Um, I only know this because of our wiring diagram that actually comes with it. It actually specifies which uh, colored wires are, what, what they're actually doing. So we've got our ECU, ECU fuse over here, the injection and power supply for the ECU here. Um, so this is the power supply and the relay for the ignition coils. And then what this one is, is the fuel pump. Like I said in one of the previous videos, um, I'm actually gonna run the fuel pumps all the way in the back of the car. So I'm not gonna run this powered wire, probably, it's probably gonna be about five or six meters all the way to the back of the car. Instead, I'm gonna run a new trigger wire from the ECU connectors here to the back of the car. And I'm gonna use this wire instead to do our starter motor. Um, we did have a few problems with the, with the ignition barrel on the car. So what we're actually gonna do is use this one instead to do the starter through a button. So I'm just gonna break apart the cable tie and braid and grommet. And we're gonna try and feed the wires back through the braid that goes to this fuse box here. And we're gonna just try and do that as neatly as possible. Um, I've pre-run a couple of lengths for the thermofan and made a note of it on my document. I'll show you the document and what changes I do to that document. Um, just so we can keep a very good note of what wires we have used and what colors they are and where they're gonna go. So I've, um, I've roughed in some wires, um, but yeah, basically we'll just go through and we'll add these in now. So I'm not having a good time feeding this through because I didn't think and I wasn't planning well enough. Um, I often find just wrapping a bit of electrical tape around these wires does actually help to try and feed it through and pull it through really nicely. So let's just do that. So now we've got our wires through at the other end. Um, I'm just going to untape them all again and then we're going to go through the pin out of a relay and select the correct relays for the job that we're actually going to do. It's very, very important to just not pick whatever relay is lying around on the ground. Uh, you will run into problems often um, and I do see this quite often with some of the phone calls that we get. These two relays here look exactly the same. Um, apart from not having a tab on one, they are both Bosch relays and they're both black and they're both square and they've got a very, very similar part number and same footprint layout. They look almost identical. This one's got an extra pin in the middle because these 87 pins are joined together. But if you actually have a bit of a better look, you'll actually find that this one is 30 and this one is 86. This pin here is 30 on this relay and this pin here is 86. These two relays are completely different in the way that they actually work together. Um, this is often called a changeover relay, um, which can give you some very unde um, undesirable uh, side effects when you actually put in the wrong relay. So make sure you check what footprint the relay actually has and what its function is actually supposed to be. We ordered two of the brown Haltech relays, um, which are the same as the other ones that actually come in the fuse box. Um, these are 30 amp relays. Um, these fans that are in this uh, Falcon 
are actually ginormous and they're very, very known for drawing a lot of power. So we're actually going to put 30 amp relays in them. We're actually going to stage the fans on two separate outputs so that we can run one, so it'll turn on first. And then when it actually gets really, really warm, we'll turn the other one on. So both will be running at full ball to try and cool the fan, uh, to try and cool the cooling system as much as possible. And then when they drop below a certain temperature threshold, they'll turn off again. So we'll set that up a little bit later. In this particular car, the battery has been relocated to the rear of the car. So I'm actually going to use the stud that is on the starter motor. Um, that is going to be our main battery supply because we have run a big, thick battery power from the battery uh, down under the car all the way up to the starter motor. So that's going to be our new battery post. Um, there are a number of different... There are a number of different ways to do battery positives. Um, these studs are quite a really handy way of doing that as well. Um, I just buy these off eBay. Um, they're very, very cool. Um, I also get the little uh, caps off eBay as well, which is just a nice, neat way of securing and keeping those um, power studs away from a stray screwdriver or something else that you might be doing up that then might arc off to the positives uh, post. These are great, so you can get ones that go through the firewall as well. So that might be another option for us as well. If we link off the starter motor and then come up to here, and then if it went through the firewall, we could then put on the other side of this wire and latch that onto the back of the post here. But because this is gonna be relatively simple and we're gonna keep all of our power in the one fuse box for this particular install, um, we're just gonna run it through the loom and snake it through and then put that on the starter motor positive and that's going to be our main battery supply. Not the alternator. The alternator can be a little bit noisy and can create some very undesirable um, voltage noise. Um, the battery or the starter is going to be a bit, bit of a bigger sponge for that noise so that's why we're going to put it there. The alternator is also a little bit harder to get to and it's further away so starter motor it is. So we're going to crimp some pins onto these wires and then I'll show you where we're going to put them in relation to what slots and what, uh, what relays they need to go into. So we've crimped on our pins to the ends of our positives the thermo fan outputs themselves, the trigger wires that are going to trigger the relay. Uh, these are gonna go straight from the ECU output here. They loop up and loop neatly down into the fuse box. So that's what we're gonna use to turn the relays on. Thankfully, we've got our switched 12 volts already done for us. Um, these are all pre-done in the fuse box, and the, uh, relay fuse box that comes from Haltech. So um, that saves us a couple of pin crimps, which is great. Um, we don't have to think about which side of the relay we need to trigger on that because they're already done for us. So naturally, these will go on the other side, which is fantastic. So we'll quickly go through and then pin those. I've got the other side of our fuse, which is gonna protect the circuit for the power side of the relay. They're gonna go in here and then we're gonna loop those around the fuse box and then populate the bottom two pins, which is pin 30, so that 87 can then go trigger out to the actual thermo fan itself. So with this one, um, we can see that we've got our positive in and positive in to go out to the fan. This is one of our relay trigger wires. So this is what I was talking about. Um, this will be the other side of the relay. So positive over here, and this will be the negative. And put that one in there. Um, I don't know if you can see right down there, but that wire, which is the black with a red stripe, the crimps are actually facing that way. Ours are facing that way. So I know that I have it backwards. So all I wanna do is pick that one up Turn it around, 
push that in. Um, this is a thinner wire because this is a, just a very low current trigger wire that comes from the ECU. So I just need to push that down the best that I can. Sometimes I need to use a little poker um, to try and push that down. And that's that click that we were talking about and looking for before. So now that we've got a nice flush clicked in relay pin, we'll do the other one. Uh, remembering that we need to have the pins facing that way. This is very hard to do with one hand actually. And that seated that pin in there beautifully now. So, all we're missing now is the bottom pin, which is gonna be for the positive supply, which I've got here. So, that'll be the next ones to do. So, now that we've got our pins crimped on nice and tightly. Made a mistake on that one. I've absolutely butchered. I'm only human after all. So, lucky, we get a couple of spare pins in the pack, so we'll definitely keep that one aside for a rainy day um, when we need to do another fuse box one day. Maybe we've lost all our pins or we damaged three pins on the next one, so definitely keep this one in your toolbox or in a uh, plastic container. I'll show you my plastic containers later on, full of empty pins, uh, full of like random and assortment of pins that have always come through when I needed one at the racetrack or somebody damaged one doing an install and they're like, oh, I don't have another one and everything's closed because it's Christmas day. So they're always, um, that, that's when that'll come through um, and be really, really handy and you'll be the hero. Now we've got a fully populated relay base for us to click in our new fan relay and another fan relay. We're going to put in two 30 amp fuses here. Um, I know that these fans are going to take a bit of juice to run, so 30 amps will then cover that. Um, we can definitely try a 25 amp fuse in either, um, and we'll just have to monitor those if we need to just check. Um, 30 will probably be right for these though. Um, the way to check that is to put in two 25 amp fuses when the fan turns on and runs for about 30 seconds. If either of those fans blow, we know it was probably just a, the wrong size fuse. Um, 30 will cover that little bit of headroom that we might need for any temperature changes or, uh, or wiring um, issues that we might have because the ground on the other side of the fan will also affect how much current that this needs. So I've just run down to my local automotive uh, parts supplier and grabbed some 30 amp fuses. I definitely did not take them out of somebody's car in the car park here. Um, they may find that out the hard way when they try and go home. That's fine. Never take fuses out of your own car. Always somebody else's car. We have now got a fully populated relay and fuse box, uh, which we don't have to think about anymore. We just have to remember which wires we've assigned. Um, but the best part about that is that a sheet of paper has already done it for us because we've already decided which wires we're gonna use. So we don't have to go and think about it um, and remember we've already done it. So that's probably one, a very, very important part of the process. Remember before I was talking about a wiring schematic? Here, I've just used a little bit of wire which I uh, chopped out of my power supply wire to go to the fuses. I just know that that is now what the fan supplies are using. The power that I'm going to use for the trans brake is this thin red wire and the trans brake output from the solid state relay is this thick orange wire. So um, we will, I'll keep adding to these and then um, we'll make a pretty good library of what wires are actually in this loom. It's all documented then for the new owner of this loom. Uh, there's nothing worse than taking phone calls at 1am going, oh hey, do you know where this wire goes or do you know where this wire goes because I'm stuck in the middle of somewhere and 
I am, uh, yeah, my car doesn't start or something's broken or I, I just don't know how to, how to troubleshoot it. So if we can make it as easy for the owner as possible, this is how to do it. Hey buddy, how you going? Good, how you going man? Good, good. Excellent. When you got your lunch? Oh, dude. Disinfect it before you open everything? Yeah, well, I'm definitely gonna go wash my hands. Man, the weirdest thing happened. Yeah. I went to start my car to go and pick up lunch. Couldn't go. Huh. Weird. Pulled apart, took me ages, pulled everything apart, and then just went to the fuse box. Ignition fuse missing. Really? Yeah. Huh. So I just got word from the marketing guys who just called me from bed. Um, they're all still in bed, working on their laptops, but they're in bed. Um, that the episodes are going a little bit too long, so we'll probably have to wrap this one up today. Um, it was really good going through this part, but um, tomorrow we'll have a few other hacks and quick tips that might be a little bit helpful when you're trying to wire up your car. So that'll be all for today, uh, but I'll see you again tomorrow.